Hello, David here, and welcome to this tutorial, where you will learn how to create a single axis robot positioner, also referred to as a linear track in visual components. When following any tutorial, check the lesson in the Visual Components Academy, and if the download files option appears, you can download the example files. With the modeling tab selected, Let's start by importing our source geometry. We are going to use this small track step file, and with the tessellation quality set to high, we can check the amount of geometry it contains. We'll use the Analyze button, and we see that we would get 32,000 triangles, which is a good number, so we can click Import. If our component is not placed in the center of the 3D world by default, Using the Component Properties panel on the right, we'll click on the red X and green Y coordinates options to set them to zero. And then the first thing we will do is adjust the origin a little by selecting the Origin Move tool from the ribbon above. It's nicely already oriented Z axis up, so we don't need to modify the orientation. But we're not completely happy with the X location. Maybe the X axis location makes sense at this end point on the left, in the center of the rail, and in the center of the slide. We'll go for the center of the slide, so we then select and drag the red X axis arrow. And since we are editing a single axis, we must hold the control key to snap, and we can then drag the cursor and snap to the various locations. We'll snap to the center of this edge, and now the X axis is in the center of the slide in this direction, and it was already by default centered in this direction. And we're happy with this setup, so we'll click Apply from the Move Origin panel on the right. And now we should separate the slide geometry from the linear track geometry. If we then click to select the geometry, the whole component appears as a single feature, as shown in the feature tree in the component graph on the left. And right clicking on the highlighted feature and selecting Explode will explode it to 67 sub features. And clicking the plus icon will expand the tree. And we can now select the sub features in the 3D world. Another option to explode geometry would be to select tools from geometry above and select the split tool. So now we want to select all the geometry that is in this moving slide. So holding the control key, we'll go through the slide geometry, adding all the little details in the selection. With a decent assembly file, you could perhaps just select a sub assembly in the feature tree on the left but sometimes you will need to make selections in the 3D world. We're happy with this selection. So we'll right click on the slide in the 3D world and from Extract, click Extract Link and the new Link 1 for the slide will appear in the component graph on the left. So now we have separated the slide from the track into a separate link. And so with link 1 selected, we can now define the joint using the link properties panel on the right. By default, the joint type is fixed so it doesn't move. We don't want a rotational joint, we want to create a translational joint. By default, it would translate along this Z axis. But we want it to move along the local X axis, so we modify the axis selection. Under Joint Properties, we'll rename it to E1 for External 1. And we'll associate it with the server controller that is created when we select New Server Controller. And now we will define the limits. The minimum limit is 0, the current location of the slide. And E1 is currently at 0, and we don't want to move to the negative side. And the maximum side will be whatever travel is available on the track, which we can measure by selecting the Measure tool. 
and zooming in a little, we click to select the first measurement point and drag to select the end point of the track, which gives us a measurement of 1580 mm travel distance. Then, either clicking close on the lower right or using the escape key, we close the measure tool. We will then select link 1 on the left again, and in the link properties on the right, we can define the maximum limit to be 1580 mm. And note that the measurements will also appear in the output panel below. We'll set the maximum speed as 200 and the maximum acceleration and deceleration to be four times the speed, so 800 for both. And now selecting the interact tool above, we can drag the slide to test that it moves as expected. And joint E1 will appear in red when the slide goes over the limit at both ends of the track. And now we have noticed that we missed the motor element of the slide. So we'll use the simulation controls to reset. So the slide is returned to the zero joint position. And clicking on the motor geometry and holding the control key, select whatever we need to add to the selection. And then holding the shift key, drag the two highlighted geometry subfeatures into the target link one above, so that it's now part of the link one geometry. And then clicking on linked one to select it and interacting with the slide again, the motor is now also moving as part of the slide. And resetting the simulation again, we will make everything a bit more visually appealing, since at the moment everything is orange in color and without material. So selecting the slide from the 3D world and from the tools option above, from material select a sign and in the panel on the right search for steel from the materials library and select steel satin and click to assign it to the slide plate linear guides and gear rack and maybe we want to make the motor black so we'll search for black Select black mat and click to select the parts we want to assign the material to. We can then clear the material search and close the material editor. And now selecting the component from the component graph panel on the left, we can use the component properties on the right to assign a material. For example, dark gray and everything that didn't have any specific material assigned to it will get this dark gray material. And then clicking to select the 3D world so that the component is deselected, we have a nice realistic looking track. Next, we need to associate this model with the interface. So we select the component in the 3D world and then select the whole component by selecting the small track at the top of the tree from the component graph on the left. For this to function as an external axis for the robot, we need to set it up as a positioner. Luckily, there's a wizard for that, so we select Wizards above and choose Positioner. The default positioner type is Workpiece Positioner. For example, a welding table would be a workpiece positioner. But we're creating a robot positioner like a track or gantry. And the flange link, basically the link where the robot would be connected, is the link one. So this one here, and which by default is correct. And then we click apply and close the wizard panel. With frames enabled from frame types in the 3D world toolbar on the left, so that the frames are visible, we can see what the wizard created. And expanding the link one behaviors on the left, we can see the mount interface created by the wizard and the frame in the 3D world, which is the location the robot will snap to and the frame automatically gets to center at the top of our link one geometry, which in this case is the correct location. And if you're not happy with the location, select the move tool and select the frame and move the frame elsewhere, or maybe use the snap tool. But now we'll test this. So let's go to the home tab to find the robot and choose, for example, the visual components, generic articulated robot, 
and drag it into the layout. Basically, you should be able to take any robot from the e-catalog and it should work with the track. This robot, however, is a bit too big for our track. So from its component properties on the right, we'll reduce the reach from 1.8 to 1.2 and the scale from 1.2 to 0.9. And then using the PNP tool, snap it to the slide on the track. And then moving to the program tab, and selecting the robot using the jog tool and from the jog panel on the right we can see that in addition to the list of six joints the robot includes by default there is also the small track E1 external joint and we can drag the slider to adjust the robot's position and using the program editor on the left create a point-to-point -point motion statement and then jogging the robot to adjust its position and dragging it back along the track in the 3D world, add another motion statement. And we can then reset and run the simulation to test the results. And this concludes this tutorial on how to create a linear track or any kind of robot positioner. Thank you for watching.